I happened to see a case from a doctor who's doing a full mouth rehab and he did a really good job of maintaining the vertical dimension. So when we want to maintain the vertical dimension on a case like this, um, we find one of the easiest ways to do it is with bio temps. So not only can you maintain the vertical or open it, even though he's going to maintain it on this case, but you can also have a very uh, nice aesthetic result and have some strong temporaries that are going to look pretty good, especially if you're going to have the temps on longer than usual instead of the usual two weeks. Maybe they're going to be on four weeks or six weeks or something like that. And so when we make the temporaries, we uh, suggest to the doctors that we do it in three segments. So segment number one, we'll have a temporary that uh, entails these two bicuspids and these two molars. Then on this side, we'll have a bio temp for these two bis and these two molars. And then we'll have another bio temp for the six anterior crowns. By the way, you can see the wear that's on here and all the wear that's gone on in the patient's teeth. The patient's broke some PFMs before. So the doctor's doing this as a full mouth uh, Bruxer rehab, um, assuming that's the only material that this patient won't be able to break. And considering these are all single unit crowns, I feel pretty strongly about that too. You know, you've seen us take a hammer and smash a Bruxer crown into a two by four. The bridges, you know, are not quite the same. We have the rule of 27 there where we get those extended spans. But for single units like this, I'm highly confident uh, that if the doctor reduces enough, we will in fact have crowns that will be able to uh, withstand this patient's biting forces. So again, three separate bio temps, one from, uh, that encompasses this side of the posterior, another one for this side of the posterior, and then the one for the six anterior teeth. And then of course, the same thing on the lower. Um, with three different segments where you've got the two bys and the two molars, the two bys and the two molars, and the six anterior teeth. And so when prepping these, um, you can start wherever you want. Sometimes it's far, fun to start in the anterior if you're not opening the bite, um, just to be able to get some aesthetic change there. But you could certainly start in the posterior as well as you wanted. And essentially what you're going to do, let's pretend we're going to prep these four posterior teeth too. So we're going to prep the two bys and the two molars and then when we're done, before we take the impression, we're just going to reline those bio temps. But because only these four teeth are prepped and the rest of the teeth in the arch are unprepped, it's very easy to maintain the vertical dimension on those temporaries by just having the patient bite them into place while the reline material is on the inside of the temporary. So when it's all said and done, uh, we now have prepped these four teeth. We have a bio temp that fits on here ready to be cemented, um, just like we were only prepping these four teeth. So, you know, the same protocol as if we were just prepping these four teeth for crowns. Except when we're done, we can now come over and prep these four teeth for crowns. And when these four preps are complete, both, and we're ready for taking an impression, even though we're not going to take it at this appointment, um, we're now going to put these bio temps in place. You can set it in, or you can actually cement them in, depending on how far you're going to go today. And then we're going to reline these bio temps at that same dimension, again, having these six teeth and these four teeth, these six natural teeth and the four with the bio temps on. If these bio temps were out, or we had to prep both sides at the same time, now we would just be hitting on these anterior teeth, which is a little sketchy for holding vertical dimension. So we're going to do it four at a time, reline the temps, four at a time, reline the temps, then prep the six anterior ones and reline these temps with both of these posterior ones in place. If you finish that all in one appointment, then, you know, now that you've relined all three segments at the correct vertical dimension, you're free to take a master impression and then put these temps back into place. But typically that's a lot of work for the patient and you're going to end up maybe just prepping the whole arch, getting the temps on and having the patient back next time uh, to pack cord and take the impression. So once that's done and everything's actually prepared, you end up with a full lower arch. Well, first of all, we got some impressions coming in from the doctor. So full arch trays, of course, because they're, um, they're full arch uh, preparations. So that's kind of absolutely necessary. And uh, plastic trays, you know, we certainly can work with that. Do we like metal a little better? Yeah, but we know we're splitting hairs sometimes. These types of impressions, uh, the most difficult thing to do in dentistry. I mean, come on, that's uh, when you're gonna prep 14 teeth and they have to control the tissue around all of them and pack cord around all of them, this is more difficult than surgically placing uh, a normal implant, more difficult than taking out an impacted wisdom tooth. This is as tough as it gets. That's why I like this to be its own appointment. And I also like to see what the bio temps are gonna do to the tissue in case we have to drop some margin. So doctor takes two, um, acceptable impressions and then we get our uppers and lowers 
And of course, the issue here is going to be how do we maintain the vertical between these if we're not going to open the bite? You know, if we're going to have enough room to put these brucks or crowns in place, if doctors reduced enough, we want to maintain that same vertical if we don't need to add to the incisal edge length of, say, the central incisors or need more room. We know the patient's comfortable at that previous vertical, and the best way to be able to do that is to take the patient who's fully prepped at this point, and you can take the uh, bio temps. They've all been relined on the lower just like they were on the upper at the proper vertical dimension. So we can put our bio temps in here and here on the bison and molars and here and here on the bison and molars. So when the patient bites together, they're at their normal um, occlusal uh, dimension because the temporaries are in place. And then when they bite together, you just squirt a little bite registration in between here, which the doctor did. So intraorally, the upper and lower temporaries were here and holding the patient open at the right dimension here on the anterior. So once you have this bite, a uh, little segment here in the anterior, you will take out the temporaries over on this side and we have the temporaries on this side still. Temporaries here are off and we have our anterior bite. And now when the patient closes together, we have the same vertical dimension. We have our two pieces of bite registration and still the temps over here. And then lastly, we can have the patient open again, take out the temporaries on this side and do one more bite registration in between these teeth. And because we had the temporary segmented like that, we are able to do all of these at the same time segmentally. And so the vertical dimension represented by the three bite registrations is uh, exactly the same as when the patient started off before they were prepared. So we've maintained it in the bio temps and we've maintained it uh, with the bite registration as well. So at that point, you know, we can confidently mount it to these three bite registrations and then oh, put the pin on the articulator and see how much room the doctor gave us. And we have plenty of room. You know, we need six tenths of a millimeter to do Bruxer minimally. So we can do a millimeter and a half hammer test strength uh, Bruxer on these teeth, upper and lower. And so that's a great job of the doctor um, holding this um, bite registration, holding the vertical, and making sure that we get an accurate bite to be able to go forward with this case and give him something, a full mouth case, that he's not going to have to adjust and adjust for hours uh, when, it, when uh, he goes to seat this in the patient's mouth. And it was funny, sitting right next to it at the technical advisor's desk was this simple impression, you know, not nearly as difficult as this one, just a simple little impression here um, for a single unit crown. But you can see how the patient bit down on the tray and everything's twisted. And you can see how the bite, how the teeth come up this way and the patient was back together on the back of this tray. And then this part is completely twisted over here on the inside and the patient had no chance of getting together. They were, there was one of the teeth biting right there. And it just looks very warped and distorted the way the tooth looks. And so uh, this is gonna go half back to that doctor. This is an example of what not to do on a relatively easy situation. And this is an example with these bite registrations of what to do on a much more complex case. So kudos, doctor. This uh, case will hopefully drop in for you and need very few adjustments.